I am so happy to be talking about Yu Yu Hakusho again. It has been a year since we covered this series and I've basically been thinking about it non-stop. What am I going to do next time? See, Yu Yu holds that special place. It hits on those nostalgic vibes just like City Hunter but also gives you the good shonen power fantasy of its contemporaries like Naruto and Dragon Ball. I love this series. So I figured, what's a story without a main character? But then I was like, okay, I can't write a whole video about Botan. So it looks like I'm going with Yusuke. In all seriousness, Yusuke Urameshi is my favorite shonen protagonist. He is a multi-layered character that is beyond his time. Real, raw, emotional, and conflicted. A perfect description of a young person facing life rolled into a story about death. This also marks the first time we are covering a single character rather than a series. I figured we covered 71 anime for you. It's time to get a little deeper into our favorites. So get ready for a big fat spirit gun to the heart. This is Yusuke Yurameshi. Let's get into it. Hey guys, this is Mike. Thank you so much for making it to the video. I just wanted to put it out there that if you want to support the channel, Bonsai Pop Patreon is the best place to go. We have an amazing community. It's more like a family and it is honestly the best anime community on the internet. I say that with full confidence and I'm sure there's plenty of people that can back that up. In fact, I know there is or they're probably in the comments right now letting you know. Anyway, give it a look. Patreon.com slash Bonsai Pop. Lowest tier is a dollar. Get you right in that discord. Get you communicating with the other people. You get a little bit of a Patreon show. Thank you so much for your consideration. And on with the show. Yusuke Yurameshi is dead. At least that's how he is when we meet him. I remember seeing this as a kid and being like, oh, here we go, boy. Mostly because this was pre-Isekai phase, the days before death meant being whisked away to another reality with some device from the modern world, like, I don't know, in another world with my toothbrush or some shit. Also, I'd like to shout out one of the OG truck coons right here making an appearance. Always good to see truck coon killing another anime pro tag. Love it, love it. But yeah, Yusuke is dead as fuck. Smeared across the road like a Tennessee armadillo, but it's quite literally why he died that sparks this entire story. You see, Yusuke is kind of an asshole, or at least that's how people see him. Except Keiko, you gotta love a kind-hearted girl who notices, you know? But anyway, this kid skips school, he beats on punks from other schools, he's basically a Yakuza in training. Bad attitude, no respect for authority, sh home life, kinda reminds me of someone I once knew. However, something the Japanese seem to get is that everybody has a story. They inherently believe that everyone is born good, and if you become bad, it's because of circumstances circumstances and bad choices, and Yusuke never really had a chance. His mother, Atsuko, is a mess. Believe it or not, less so in the anime than in the manga. In the anime, she's just a drunk, but in the manga, it's obvious that there's more to her than that. And like Yusuke, she is spiritually aware, which may or may not have led to her alcoholism in the first place. Not everybody deals with things in a healthy way. She's also incredibly young, having given birth to Yusuke at only 14, something which is super rare in Japan, but actually knowing people with parents that young, I can firmly say that this alone can f*** you right up. She's single and Yusuke's father is completely out of the picture. We never even learn his name, but Atsuko loves her son more than anything. However, she can't get over her own personal demons to be a good mother or even a present one as she's usually too sauced or just straight up passed out to care for her son. So obviously Yusuke is a punk with a chip on his shoulder and one of the most cliche things about punks is how cliche they are. Always. From the UK to Japan to America, we all have a similar story, but what thins the herd is heart. Believe me, I have met a lot of punks in my day. Some of them are dead, some of them are dying, some of them are in jail, and some of them have gone on to change the world for the better. And for all of Yusuke's flaws, the kid is cursed with being a genuinely good person. Hence why he's dead. Despite being annoyed by a little kid being stupid, Yusuke jumped in front of truck to save him and died for it, sending the mortal and spiritual world into slight chaos. It's kind of hilarious, kind of sad, but literally everyone had written off Yusuke as totally f***ed. But then he goes and sacrifices sacrifices himself for some brat he doesn't even know or like and totally gums up the works. Also, it's a great comedy moment. Turns out the kid would have been totally fine if Yusuke hadn't intervened. He actually got a little bit more banged up than he would have if Yusuke didn't do anything. Still, this one action proved that the person that you see on the outside or perhaps the way that you perceive somebody is entirely different than who they truly are in most cases. The setup is gold and the beauty of shonen anime is that it almost always is trying to teach young boys a valuable lesson. Almost. 
always. In this case, mangaka Yoshihiro Tagashi was speaking to young people about inner beauty. It's so easy to fall into the trappings of becoming what people think of you or letting your mistakes define you. However, if we truly are all born with good in us, that good just doesn't disappear. We can find it again. And sometimes the good in you may burst at the seams and you'll find yourself doing something you feel is out of your character or even stupid for the sake of others. So naturally, after being outed as a soft-hearted schmuck, Yusuke is immediately put to work by the powers that be to become a spirit detective in order to get his body back, setting him on the path towards becoming a world savior and the ridiculous ending of the series that we aren't going to get into in this video. He's also given a spirit egg that, when it hatches, will either become very helpful or devour Yusuke. Of course, this depends on his heart. And wouldn't you know it, this is the thing that hatches from it. I mean, the kid might knock your teeth out, but inside, he's just poo. And I love that so much, you know? I remember when I was a kid, I thought that there was this magical transformation to becoming an adult, but there isn't. You are the same person at 15, 29, 60, and when you die. Who you are at the core doesn't change, just your awareness of how your actions and words affect the world around you. We all have good and bad qualities, which we choose to highlight is just that, a choice. However, you can't change the poo within you. But it's funny, isn't it, that someone who comes off as prickly as Yusuke is actually as tender as he proves to be. That's someone who is so manly on the outside and his battles against evil spirits and the bigger threats like Tagoro and the Dark Tournament could be so emotional and kind. Honestly, I don't really think so. I mean, uh, look at a cactus, right? Scary on the outside, but the inside will keep you alive in the desert, assuming you don't eat the wrong cactus, or the right cactus, depending on what you're trying to get done. Anyway, my point is that this 30-year-old anime is trying to teach a lesson about masculinity that the world still hasn't f***ing gotten yet. Yusuke has power, a lot of it. However, on the inside, he still gets scared, sad, he mourns loss, he celebrates victory, he gets conflicted at crossroads. Cross this with a muscle-bound knucklehead like Goku, and the two don't even begin to compare when it comes to realism. But that's the point, and honestly, it's why I'm so attracted to Yu Yu Hakusho in general. Dragon Ball is a fairy tale. Yu Yu Hakusho is more like a slice of life with a fantastic twist. It comes off like a power fantasy, but it's really just the story of Yusuke growing up and becoming a man. So we're left with the question, what is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! Well, I would argue, typically, yes. The Dropkick Murphys say that we're the first ones to starve, the first ones to die, the first ones in line for that pie in the sky. And then when the sky darkens and the prospect is war, who's given the gun and then pushed out the door? Expected to die for the land of our birth that we never owned one lousy handful of earth. And historically, there's plenty of proof of that, and I think it makes a lot of men Bitter. It's a strange thing to be told that you have all the money and power, but to feel so worthless or weak, so responsible, but yet ineffectual. You see, as a man, you generally have not necessarily an idol, but someone you're always compared to, someone who is quote unquote manlier than you. But usually, that guy is a callous dick. I mean, you feel me? Or, or am I just talking too much from personal experience here? I feel like this is a common thing. Notice that Yusuke's teacher is actually a woman. Not only that, but she's this old ass lady too. Genkai is the embodiment of everything Yusuke is learning about himself and the world as he grows throughout the narrative. The woman is incredibly tough, but kind and caring as well. She'll beat Yusuke into the ground until he gets it, but always picks him back up when he falls. Being a man isn't about being uncaring unfeeling, ripped, seething with testosterone, and using your power to bend the world to your will. That's called being a f***ing asshole. Being a man is about doing what needs to be done when it needs to be done because you understand people's feelings, their needs, and you wish for the well-being of others. Also, keynote here, that's kind of what being a woman is about too. Just look at Genkai. So where does the idea of man even really fit into reality? Everyone has feelings and they're all the same feelings. What's different is the makeup we place on them and what we do with them. Why you're mad doesn't change the fact that you're mad, or that the anger you feel is the same as the anger someone else feels for a totally different reason. Mad is mad, my friends. Same with joy. Emotion is a universal language, just like music. Our feelings exist for us to relate to each other, not to drive us apart. And they certainly don't make us weak. If knowledge is power, wisdom must be the edge of that blade. And I think wisdom is the ability to relate to other people, to empathize 
empathize with them and their circumstances, but also to relinquish control. And for the record, I'm not trying to lecture. Instead, I want to open up a dialogue because there is a difference between men and the man. And that line gets blurred so often. At this point, the two have become almost completely synonymous. And yes, there are men out there who want to become the man. And also, being raised wrong doesn't help. The thing you hear the most when comparing responses to conflict between men and women is that women are quicker to empathize and men are quicker to want to fix the situation. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but the problem is, is that some situations can't be fixed. Sometimes the thing people need the most is empathy. But when you're told you're powerful and you realize you're powerless, it creates a mental dissonance, a feeling of futility and uselessness. And I guarantee every one of you can pull up a memory from this exact scenario, male or female, or anything in between. For instance, when Genkai is murdered, Yusuke is beside himself because at the time, he was completely incapable of preventing it, helpless to defend what he cared about, no matter how much power he had, no matter how strong he thought he was. Questioning what makes a man isn't your quote unquote beta sh It's what we should all be doing as we tumble endlessly into the future. As we face greater threats, it's going to take evolution to triumph over them. It's going to take men and women working together as equals, respecting each other as humans with a couple different organs selected in a genetic lottery to get through it as a species. We hold each other up or no one gets over the wall. Use K isn't my favorite just because the spirit gun is the coolest or because his attitude is hilarious. It's because as the main character of a shonen story, he he is the embodiment of what I think we should be looking at when we gaze into the future. He's the kind of idol I think that young boys should have as long as they have someone to guide them with a little bit of context. It's okay to be rough and tough, but only when trapped. It's more important to recognize all aspects of who you are as a person and to embrace your gentleness. If we choose to exist within the constraints of society, our goal should be to make it better for everyone. Be proud of your feelings. It means you're alive. Use them to better yourself instead of locking them away. Use them to get closer to people rather than keeping them at an arm's distance. Shonen is about giving young people hope and teaching life lessons. This is what Yoshihiro Tagashi taught me through Yusuke Urameshi, and it was a very valuable lesson. Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Mike. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching the entire video. I know this episode was a little bit different, so let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. We gotta send out some love to Super Saiyan God, Yamcha, and of course, our lucky patron of the week, DJ Blacklight. Thank you guys so much for your consistent support of the channel. We're working with this plate, got our own line of merch coming out. Check us out on social media, like the video, subscribe if you're ready. If you're not, go watch the rest of our videos and figure out what you're missing. Thanks again for watching. This is Bonsai Pop. I'm Mike, and I'll see you next week.